kill her. Please, baby, don't do this to me. Where are you? Sophia! How many times will I kill her? I've asked myself that question a thousand times. It was always there, flying around my head like my own personal vulture, waiting for me to die and scavenge my corpse. It was the only thing I could think about when I ended up in that hospital bed. But... I can't really blame the tornado, can I? What can you expect from a force of nature? I was the one who chased it. My obsession. I deserved to be in that bed. Neither dead, nor alive. I had screwed with destiny, and it screwed me right back. Fair deal. It was also reassuring to know that I couldn't harm anybody else, as long as I was in a coma. That was the type of nonsense I had to tell myself to keep me on the path. For all those years, I'd hated my father almost as much as myself for what happened to my little sister. And then I go and do the same thing to my own daughter. My own Sophia. And they say things never change. <laughs> Cynics, what do they know? I put Sophia in danger, taking her with me on the job. Severe weather phenomena. It's more exciting than it sounds. Extreme weather. There's some radical 90s slang for you. My reckless father had done the same thing with Sophia and I. At least this time she... didn't suffer. Well, had I known. But I didn't. Not yet. It seems death has always been a backseat driver on my journey through life. But even then I couldn't see it. I was so damn consumed by my sister that even at death's door, I couldn't see its face. drawing. The first of many. It had been too long since Sophia had been more than a whisper screaming in the back of my mind. But I could still recognize it. I admit, at that moment, hope started to flourish inside me. Where would the drawings lead me? Was my little sister alive in this world?
Like my father before me, I had spent all my life studying weather phenomena. I thought I was different. I thought I was doing it to pay my debt to Sophia. I was wrong. But all that work couldn't have been for nothing. <laughs> I was told my very first published study on the hazards of road fog was all sorts of helpful. I was rather proud of that one. And now, of course, to get to Sophia, I had to bend fog to my will. That'd be the first of many, too. Every decision creates ripples, countless unforeseen consequences. If we could see the inner workings of this infinity, we would mimic the deer that stands still to elude its predator. We wouldn't dare make a move. I couldn't see it, so I followed the path, and that kept me alive. But it did much more than that. Introspection can be far more scarring than any wound. First, I saw myself reflected in the shallow sea, and I wept. Then fear found me deep in the bottomless belly of this world. Time unraveled in the forest. It was much later, in the world of ice, that I fought against the demons that had been passed down to me, father to son. And finally, on the heavens and at the sacred tree, the truth of my maker. For all that, solitude and sorrow were my true, faithful companions in the path of Talamus. They consumed the beauty of this realm, making it gray and hopeless. The only thing that mattered was moving forward. Only the path remained. How would I find her otherwise? She was just a little kid, even more so than I, laughing away while playing on a swing set. I saw it coming before she did, and I ran and ran and ran and didn't look back until I was safe, all the way up in a tree. It was all over in a split second. No dramatic exit. And suddenly, she was gone. <laughs> 